Hi. Howdy. Welcome to Beaver Mountain Works. It's, it's been a great summer on vacation, going out and seeing the great outdoors, and now we're starting to get ready for hunting season. So here at Beaver Mountain Works, we're starting to manufacture our quivers for our archery. Here I'm starting to do a personalized one that go on the hip for a hunter to walk out into the woods and just draw it as he goes. And you'll see it in stages as we produce it. And at the end, you'll get to see the finished product. <clears throat> so now I'm done um, stitching. Or stitching. <laughs> now I'm done putting the holes in to stitch it. So this is how it will go together. So it needs the tubular and it's tapered. And that's the main formed body of the uh, quiver <clears throat> and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and mark this on the end if you come forward here put my line here so gouge out the stitching line so the stitches drop down below also gouge one at the top here we're putting a reinforcement piece on the top here after everything is done so that way everything goes in smooth and it keeps the integrity of the top of the quiver. And this is our little tool to show us the stitching, where to put our holes. And we'll do the same thing over up here. stitching wheel they call it and it shows an indication there of where we're going to punch our holes and it kind of gives you a guide to where you're going to be um, punching your holes in As you can see we do all this stuff by hand and um, then I put my piece of leather behind my hole punch I just punch my holes So uh, now I'm into stitching the the quiver together, and you usually start at the uh, at the narrow end, and you work your way up to the thicker end. It's a little easier to get your hand in there, and that would be the bottom. And you prep everything. You line up all your holes, and what I, I normally end up doing is uh, getting it through one way, through about four holes. And once you have it one way, then you can have it a little bit loose so it's easier to, to get it started. And then as you are about to come back with it, you'll, um, you'll tighten it up some. So that way it snugs together and then from that point on you work your way, you work your way up through it. As you can see here, go right to the very end. It's a two needle system that we're using here. And you snug it up like this. So it's good and snug and, and what you, you don't want to just yank on it, you just want to give it some taunt to it to make sure that it everything is together nice and snug and then you can come back and after your first couple of stitches it will uh, it will lock up nice and tight you might have to guide it through by tilting it a little bit I'm sure have a work here you're not beating your hand on things <laughs> and this is the time When you have your assortment of awls, ones that work for you, and whatever particular pliers you may need when you're doing this, sometimes you may have to line it up to get your holes together.
Some people like to use curved needles on this. I myself don't need one, but uh, some people do. You should get it in the right hole. You can go through one hole because you're in the beginning here, and then go through the second hole. Pull it together, snack it. And you just keep doing this, and then once you get up to a certain point, then you and it's nice and snug. I'm usually about six to, to eight holes, where it's nice and snug together. Then I'll do two needles at a time, and we'll show you that in a minute. So as I'd said before, you get six to eight, and see how it kind of holds together there. It's nice and snug because it's now by its own attrition holding. So you basically will go through the bottom one, and this is a good technique. I should figure out what the hole is. <clears throat> You'll go through the bottom one first because that's your bottom thread coming through. Bring it through once. You'll get your own technique to start with, but I'll show you some simplification of it. You go through the top one. And then you'll go through the bottom one from the top. You want to make sure you, you keep this thread out of the way so that way you're not going into the in through the thread itself with the tip of the needle, which then creates a problem. And when you it does happen to you, you'll understand what I mean. Um, explaining it to someone, it's better with practicality. So when you actually end up doing that, you'll say, oh, that's what Mark was meaning. And then when I put this needle in, I put it to the front so that I miss, I miss the thread there. Because when you pull it tight, if you do get it in between, it'll end up binding and you won't get a good tight, tight fit. And you want to make sure that your thread is snug. And that snugness is what shows a clean, a nice clean stitch. And you just keep doing that. With the top one, you'll go through the top first. Come through the bottom. And then when you take this one here, you want to make sure the thread's out of the way. You can either have it forward or back, just to make sure that the tip of the needle does not go through the other thread when it goes through the hole. <clears throat> Pull it through. Same thing here, you want to make sure the tip of the needle goes through the hole, not through the other thread when it comes through the hole. Very important. And you snug it, and it snugs all the way along. And as we're going from small to large. You can see how snug it is. Inside, and from that angle there. <clears throat> 